I'm going to start off with this uh, brief review of the doyle fuller newman model. So this is a model for a, a, a planar cell, um, as illustrated in this cartoon uh, at the top of the page. And here you see um, you've got two electrodes, you've got an anode and a cathode separated by a porous spacer. And the electrodes are particulate, so um, they're composed, these, these small balls are me meant to represent the um, the particles of active material. And then the whole thing is bathed in electrolyte. And so you've got uh, transport occurring both within the electrode particles um, and within the electro electrolyte, which runs across the whole cell. So you've got two, two, two scales to this model. There's a macro scale dimension, which is the dimension running across the cell and a microscale dimension, which is the dimension of, of the individual particles. So, and um, the macroscale uh, model is obtained by uh, at volume averaging um, some equations for the electrolyte. And then this couples to microscale diffusion equations for lithium transport inside the individual electrode particles. Um, and the, the physics uh, that goes into the model, there's really four key components to the physics. There's lithium transport in the electrode material, uh, where the lithium is in solid solution. And then you've got lithium and charge transport in the electrolyte. Um, and, and those two transport mechanisms couple together via a charge transfer uh, reaction that occurs at the interface between um, the electrode particles and the electrolyte. So in other words, on the surface of the electrode particles. And the, the final piece of physics is you need to account for charge transport in the electrode matrix, but that's fairly straightforward, that's Ohm's law. Now, what I'd like to emphasize is that um, in order to get this model working well, you need to parameterize it properly and you need to spend quite a bit of time thinking about parameterizing the model properly. Um, so if I start first with the electrolyte transport, the model needs to account for the dependence of uh, lithium diffusivity and uh, uh, the electric conductivity of the electrolyte. And so the dependence of that on the lithium concentration in the electrolyte. And so we've taken data uh, for uh, LIPF6, which is one of the very common electrolytes from this paper by uh, Ecker in 2015, and fitted uh, to that data and so the, the bottom two graphs show how the diffusivity and the conductivity depend upon lithium concentration. Um, active material transport is also really important um, because it's, it's, it's absolutely key to the performance of the battery. And it turns out for most materials, um, the, the mobility of the lithium is very, very sensitive upon the concentration within the material. Um, and in fact, uh, for something like graphite, you, you get a variation in diffusivity of lithium, which is almost four orders of magnitude, depending on the concentration. And what that means is that if you try and uh, model transport within the elect electrode particles via a linear diffusion equation, you get very poor results. And so here we've fitted to, again, to data from ECHA um, for graphite and this variant of NMC, um, the data is in black, the fit is in red, and uh, that turns out to be an adequate fit in order to get really rather good results. And the final component to uh, a, a data fitting that you need to do in order to get the model working well is uh, for the Butler-Volmer equation. So the Butler-Volmer equation is, is the equation that tells you what the um, current is that goes across the edge of the uh, electrode particle into the electrolyte and that's a function of this thing uh, the over potential which is essentially the potential difference between the electrode and the electrolyte with this equilibrium potential or open circuit voltage subtracted off from that potential difference so when the over potential is zero um, the current goes to zero um, and as you go through zero the current reverses and this is the the, the thing you need to get correct here is the open circuit voltage for your um, particular material. So on the left hand side, you see uh, an open circuit voltage for graphite. 
uh, in the middle for NMC and the right for LFP. And, and for graphite and NMC, there's, there's really quite a marked variation in open circuit potential with changes in concentration in lithium in the, in the electrode material. And if you throw all of that together, um, you, can, you can actually get uh, very, very accurate simulations of uh, real experimental data. And that's not just discharge charge curves. So we've uh, gone and tested this out on drive cycle data, which I think is a relatively severe test of the model. And we've compared to some experimental results that uh, Alana uh, Aragonzulko in Lancaster has for a Samsung, Samsung Graphite NTA cell, and also that Ferran Brossa has in Warwick. And they both show very good agreement. So I'm gonna show you Alana's results here. Um, in the top figure, you see uh, the, the, the current draw that's been taken off the uh, cell as a function of time. So you can see it's very non-uniform current draw. And then in the bottom figure, a compar bottom two figures, there's a comparison between the uh, voltage of the cell that's measured experimentally and the voltage predicted by the model. So the voltage predicted by the model is in orange and the experimental voltage is in black. And you see that there's amazingly good agreement between the two. Um, so I want to say a little bit about the motivation of why uh, we spent so much time writing these codes. And the reason really is that the commercial codes that are available are, are, are quite slow. And that's fine when you're considering a single cell. But in reality, you might um, very well like to consider something like a pouch cell or a, um, a jelly roll cell, uh, which are, are, are quite large. So for example, a pouch cell is composed of uh, 50 single cells, around 50 single cells stacked upon each other. And it might have a size comparable to something like a, a pack of coffee. And because it's so large, uh, it, can, it can heat up significantly and the different parts of the cell will get to, to, to really quite different temperatures. And that wouldn't be a problem except that um, the electrochemistry of a cell is very temperature dependent. And in particular, the hotter the cell gets, the easier it is for, to, for it to discharge and therefore the, um, the hotter it gets. And so you get this sort of runaway, uh, you can get this runaway process of, of heating in particular parts of your pouch cell. So in order to properly model a pouch cell, you have to account for the non-uniform temperature throughout the, uh, the three-dimensional pouch cell. And uh, you then have to couple that to uh, the Doyle-Fuller-Newman model, but the, you need to solve the Doyle-Fuller-Newman model, model at every um, space point within the pouch cell. And since the uh, Newman model is two-dimensional, um, the problem for the entire pouch cell is five-dimensional. And it's well known that such high-dimensional problems are extremely challenging. Um, and in order to solve them and get accurate solutions, you need really very fast and efficient code. 